my name is Angela Yu. I'm 39 and I work as a cognitive science associate professor at the University of California, San Diego. I was born in China in a city called Hangzhou. It was where Marco Polo was stationed a thousand years ago. I moved here when I was 12, here being Houston. The transition to the United States was really rough. I think middle school is probably a difficult time for everyone, but I think it was especially hard for me because I didn't know English, I didn't have any friends, I was the only child, so it was very challenging. Math was sort of what saved me when we came to the States. It was the one area where I could still find academic success when everything else seemed to be impossible. And then when I arrived in high school, I discovered the math competition scene, and that really jumped very well with my personality because I'm actually very competitive by nature, in a good-natured way. If I had to describe myself in one word, I would say perfectionist. Being a perfectionist is both good and bad. It allows me to be meticulous and rigorous in my thinking, in my work but also makes it very stressful sometimes just for that last extra bit of perfection. So a lot of times in life and in my work, I have to learn to let go and to accept that my best effort is good enough. My first job was working at Astroworld, which is an amusement park in Houston. My position was a games hostess, and that involved selling games to people, enticing them to stop and play, and I was terrible at it. <laughs> I realized very early on that I'm probably not meant to be a salesperson. After high school, I went to MIT for university, and it was a fantastic experience. It was, I think by then, the best four years of my life. It was just really fabulous to be surrounded by people that I felt were just like me, who liked math, who liked to think about problems analytically, who had similar interests. I really felt I belonged, and that was a great feeling. After college, I wanted to study computational neuroscience. So I went to uh, University College London. When I was in London, I thought that was the best four years of my life, even better than college. So many different things to do, and it's so easy to go anywhere else you want, in Europe, anyway. After London, I did a postdoc, and I thought I would try out a small town um, for once in my life and try out and see what that's like, and so I went to Princeton, um, and that was different. <laughs> Princeton was really tiny, and it was also a little stressful because I was looking for a faculty position, and probably that was the hardest part of my whole academic career. Nothing else really compared to it. The amount of stress you encounter when you try to find a job in the faculty market is extreme. After Princeton, I interviewed at a number of universities for faculty position, and that's how I ended up at UCSD. It turned out to be a really good fit for me because I'm in the cognitive science department, which is a rare kind of department. It's a very new field, the study of cognition, combining tools from psychology, neuroscience, and computer science. And that's exactly my background, so it was a perfect fit for me. In my work, a big chunk of my time is spent on teaching, and then another major part of my work is research. At the current moment, we're very excited because we're working on a face processing project where we're trying to understand how humans represent and process very high dimensional information like faces. In particular, how humans look at a face and decide whether someone is trustworthy or friendly or intelligent or attractive, and so on and so forth. So the kind of math that we use the most in my work is probability, because probability is a mathematical way to talk about exact information and uncertainty. And the way the brain deals with the environment is that it constantly has to deal with uncertainty. And so we try to model how the brain copes with the environment, how it does computations, how it represents the information, then we need the mathematical construct of probability theory. An example of probability theory in practice is if you walk into a store and the store clerk ignores you, it could either be because they didn't see you or it could be because they don't like you. So given that you notice they didn't notice you, 
you have to make an inference about whether it's because they're busy or because they purposely ignored you. If you want to compute the probability that the person is simply busy and not unfriendly, you need to multiply the prior probability, that is the prior knowledge you have, the person might be busy at that time of the day in that store, times the probability that they will not notice you given that they're busy. And those two quantities together, when they're multiplied, allows you to compute the probability that in fact they're just busy and not that they're unfriendly when they don't notice you. And so that's the kind of inference that your brain has to make all the time to judge situations based on indirect cues. And probability theory tells you exactly how to judge from a situation what the right conclusions are. Probability theory is an analogy for how the brain copes with its noisy, uncertain environment continuously. The ultimate goal of our research is to understand the computational principles underlying behavior. So when we apply math to our work, it's not only about utilizing theorems that other people have discovered, but actually inventing new ones. So the scientific problems we encounter are unique and therefore the mathematical solutions are also unique. There are actually many applications of this type of knowledge as well. One possible application area is machine learning. There is the possibility that what we discover about human decision-making and learning and information processing will one day allow us to make better artificial systems. Yet another application area is psychiatry or neurology. If we understood better how the healthy brain works, then we also have better chance of understanding how to treat it when something goes wrong, like in psychiatric disorders, or neurological disorders, and there are lots of exciting opportunities there as well. There are many things I love about my work. I think my favorite part is I get to be an explorer. So every day is different, and I get to structure my own time and define my own projects and decide my own path and my own approach to how I'm gonna solve the problems. And that's very exciting. It's like being an intellectual pioneer and you get to explore unseen frontier territories no one has ever been to before. One thing I wish someone had given me advice about when I was younger was that it's okay to want to have family and career at the same time. And what it takes to juggle an academic career and a family is that you really need a very good spouse. You need a supportive partner who understands the challenges of your, your career and your constraints and is willing to provide the support that is needed to make it work. Ten years from now, I'm sure I'll still be doing science and enjoying it and having a great time. I can't say exactly what I'll be working on because even last year I wouldn't know exactly what I'll be working on this summer, and yet here I am. So I don't know exactly what I'll be working on, but I'm sure I'll be having a ball.